Good day and thank you for joining us. So in today's lesson we'll be looking at our first lesson for the grade 10 year and as you know at the start of every year we need to refresh everyone's knowledge on certain things and today what we're going to focus on is specifically the laws of exponents. Cool. So basically we're just going to be revising the laws. We're going to have a look at each law. I'll explain them and then we'll look at one or two examples and at the end we will look at some more complicated examples. Cool. So we're going to look here at our first friend over here. He is law number one of exponents. And basically what law number one of exponents says is that when we have the same base and we are times in the same base, the exponents that are above will be added together. Okay. So basically how we'd write that is a, because we're keeping that base, right? And then we are adding the exponents. That's M plus N. Cool. So how can I translate that into an example? Let me take a different color for you guys. So here we have x to the power of 3 times x to the power of 4. Cool. So basically what has to happen now is we have to say x times x. So we know we're going to keep that base. So the base is the same. So we'll add these exponents. So it's 3 plus 4. And that's going to give me x to the power of 7. Now looking at our next example over here, we're going to look at some extra steps in the examples. Cool. So what's going to happen is when we have an example with um, coefficients and our variables and exponents, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at those coefficients first, right? So we're going to say 3 times 2 first, which is going to give me 6, and then we're going to look at x next, okay? So we times those two x's. Now remember, here by this x, there's the invisible one on top. So this is going to be x, 8 plus 1, which is going to give me 9. Then we look at y, which is 2 plus 3, which is going to give me 5. Okay, so that's 6x to the power of 9, y to the power of 5 as our final answer over there. Moving on to law number 2 over here, we have a to the power of m over a to the power of n. So what this law basically says is that when we are dividing bases that are the same, the exponents will be minus from one another. Cool. So here we can see we're going to keep that a and m minus n. Okay, so you're minusing that bottom exponent from the exponent at the top. Okay, you can basically view this middle line here as the minus sign. So it's m minus n. So how do we translate that into a normal example? Here we have x to the power of 8 divided by x to the power of 2. So once again, we're going to keep the base. The base is the same. And then we're going to say it's 8 minus 2. And our final answer is going to come out to x to the power of 6. Cool. And now we'll look at, once again, an example with coefficients included. As we know, we will divide the coefficients first as normal. So 6 divided by 2 will give me 3. Then we'll take the a down over here. That's 4 minus 2, which gives me 2. And then we have b, 6 minus that invisible 1 over there that we can't forget about. And we'll have... 5. Cool, so that is the first law of exponents revised and the second law of exponents revised. Looking here now at law number 3, so we have a to the power of m and that's in brackets to the power of n. So we have a brackets to the power of n and basically what this law says is that when we are putting a power to a power, we times those powers together. Okay, so basically what I'm trying to say is here we'll keep the a right and then what's going to happen is the m is going to be times by the n cool so how do we translate that into a normal example here we can see we have 3x squared to the power of 4 so what we have to do is we have to put 3 to the power of 4 first so what 3 to the power of 4 is it's going to be 81 and then so you can see that with the coefficient, we have to put that as per normal to the power, right? But now we're getting to the variable, which has the exponent. So now we'll keep the variable the same. And the exponent over there is going to times 4. So it's 2 times 4. Cool. So that's 81x to the power of 8. Cool. So now looking at here another example, we have 4a squared b 
7 to the power of 2. So once again, that coefficient in front, that is going to be squared as per normal. So 4 squared is going to give me 16. A, we're going to bring that over here. 2 times 2 gives me 4. And B, 7 times 2 gives me 14. Cool. That is law number 3. Moving on to law number 4 over here. We can see that we have A times B to the power of M. And what this law basically says is that when we have two things in brackets, both of them will be put to the power of M. So that basically means A to the power of M times B to the power of M. How does that translate into our examples over here? So we have 3X times Y to the power of 3, and that's all squared. So I'm just going to show you guys as well. In the first example, I'll do it one way that you could do it. There's two ways that this method can work out, and they both come out to the same answer, okay? So for this first one, I'll do the first method, and the second one, I'll do the second method. So the first one is going to be, obviously, following the law, as it says over there, we're going to have 3x squared. So that's going to be in brackets, because the square affects it differently. And then times y to the power of 3 squared. So what ends up happening now is, remember, coefficient first. 3 squared gives me 9 x, remember that invisible 1 above there, so that's 1 times 2, x to the power of 2, times y, because there's 1 in front, 1 squared is going to give me a 1 again, so we're just going to do y now, 3 times 2, which gives me 6, and if we times that together, we're going to get 9x squared y, 6. So the other way that you could have done this, which is also the second method, is you can just times what is inside the brackets, right? So once you times that, you'll get 3xy to the power of 3, and then you will square that, and you'll basically get to the exact same answer over here. So I'm just going to show you what I mean here in the second example. So we'll say 2a squared times 4ab to the power of 3, and that's all to the power of 3, so we'll work in the brackets first. So that's 2 times 4, that gives me 8. a, 2 plus 1 gives me 3, and then we just have b to the power of 3, and that's all to the power of 3. So if we're going to check first what is 8 to the power of 3, we're going to get a bizarre number, which is 512, and then we're going to bring that a down, that's 3 times 3, that is 9, and then b, 3 times 3, which is also 9. Okay, cool. So that is law number 3 and 4 revised right there. Okay, so looking at law number 5 now. So law number 5, they show us here that we have a, which it's actually a, not a 9. So that's a to the power of 0. Cool. And basically what this law says that anything that is put to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So I'm going to explain that here in this example. So... We can see we have 100x to the power of 6, and that's all in brackets to the power of 0. Now remember, if this is in brackets and the 0 is outside, that means that this 0 ends up affecting this whole bracket, okay? Because it's outside the bracket, it affects the whole bracket. So that means that I'm saying this whole term is to the power of 0, which means that this whole term will be now equal to 1. But here comes the difference, okay? We have 9x to the power of 0, y to the power of 4. So now we can see that the 0 exponent is only affecting the x. So how that will work is we'll have 9. And so x to the power of 0 we know is going to give me 1. And that's y to the power of 4. So you can see the 0 did not affect anything else except for the x because it was the exponent of the x. The x became 1. Anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. And so now our final answer is going to be 9y to the power of 4, because that 1 does not affect anything else here. Moving on here, we have law number 6. So this is the law that has a to the power of a negative 1. And what it basically says is that when we have that anything that's to the power of a negative number, what's going to happen is it's going to flip over. So basically... We have 8 to the power of negative 1, that's over 1. If we want to change that exponent to be positive, we have to invert this fraction. 
So what happens is the A goes to the bottom and this negative one becomes a positive one, okay? So what happens is we have 1 over A. So you can see all we did is we took the A from the top of the fraction and we put it at the bottom of the fraction and it changed that exponent sign to a positive. So how can we translate that here into these examples here? We have x to the power of negative 3. Once again, we know if we want to change that negative to a positive, we have to flip the fraction because remember this is on top of the fraction at the moment. So we'll say 1 is over 1 over x to the power of 3 is our final answer. But what happens here when we have a coefficient in front? Because remember, we can say that this is actually 3 times x to the negative 2, right? So the 3 isn't really affected by this x to the negative 2. So what's going to happen is when we're trying to get that negative to a positive, only the x will move, okay? Because the 3 over here does not have a negative exponent attached to it. This x does, so the x will move by itself. So basically what I'm trying to say is we write now have 3 x to the negative 2 over 1. Now all that's going to move is that x. So what's going to happen is 3 is going to stay on top of the fraction and x is going to come down with the square. So you can see it's pretty easy. All we're doing is moving the thing that's affected by the term that's affected by the negative exponent to the bottom. Here for another example we have 3a to the negative 2, b to the power of 4. So we can see only the a is affected by that negative exponent, which is negative 2. So we're going to have 3 and b4 stay on top of the fraction, right? So it's 3b4 over a to the power of 2. And then here we have 1 over 5, a to the negative 6b. And so basically what we need to do here is we can see that we have a fraction here in front already with the coefficient, right? So we know that 1 is already on top of the fraction and 5 is at the bottom already. And now we know also that these terms will also be living on the top of the fraction, right? So what's going to happen now is we can see that A once again is affected by the negative exponent, which means that A will go to the bottom of the fraction and B will stay at the top, okay? So, which means basically that we'll be left with B on the top, because remember 1 times B is just going to give me B. So, that's B on top, and then 5A to the power of 6. So, you can see because that 5 was already at the bottom of the fraction, the 5 exists at the bottom of the fraction when A to the power of 6 comes down as well. And that is going to be law number 6. Now, law number 7, we can see we have... The square root of 25 x to the power of 8. So the thing about the square roots is, so when it comes to the coefficients, we'll square root those numbers as per normal. But when it comes to the exponents, we have to know that there is, when it comes to square roots specifically, there's a neg there is an invisible 2 over there, right? So what happens is with this, 8 will be divided by 2. So that exponent is divided by the exponent in front of the square root. So this is how it's going to work. Square root of 25, that is going to be 5. And then we'll keep that x over there, and we do 8 divided by 2. So my final answer is going to be 5x to the power of 4. How do we translate that into our examples over here? So we can look at the coefficient first. It's 49 squared, gives I'm um, square rooted, my bad. That's going to give us 7. Now we'll do a, 2 divided by 2 b 4 divided by 2 because remember there is a invisible 2 in front over there so that's going to basically give us 7a and b to the power of 2 now looking here at this example here it's a bit special because we have a 3 in front that is cube root right so it's basically going to be the same principle except the 6 will be divided by 3 that coefficient will still be cube rooted so how that works is we say 8 cube rooted gives me 2 right and then we'll have x, 6, divided by 3. So that's 2x to the power of 2. And that is law number 7 explained. So now we'll have a look at some combined examples which are going to be very much close to what you'll see more often in grade 10 when it comes to exponents. 
So try and familiarize yourself with answering these type of questions. So here in this combined example, we have 3a to the negative 2b to the power of 4 times negative 5a to the power of 3b to the minus 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to times this term, uh, these two terms together, and then we'll look at if there are any negative exponents that need this thing to be flipped or anything like that. So we're going to start. We'll start with the coefficient first, as always. So 3 times negative 5 gives me negative 15. So we have a now. So this is minus 2 plus 3. So we have minus 2 plus 3. And we know that's going to give us positive 1. So it'll just stay as negative 15a. And then we'll have b, 4, plus minus 2. Because remember, if we're times in the same basis, we are adding exponents. So 4 plus minus 2 should basically be 4 minus 2, which gives me an exponent of 2. So that is our final answer there. It's negative 15 a b squared. Looking at the next one over here, we're going to follow that same process. So coefficient first, that's 5 times a fifth, which is going to give us a 1. Then we'll look at a, which is a 1 minus 6. 1 minus 6 is going to give me negative 5. And then b is negative 3 plus 1, which is going to give me negative 2. And basically what your final answer here is going to come out to being is you're going to keep obviously the 1. The 1 is going to stay on top because a and b are both going to the bottom because they are both affected by a negative exponent. So we have 1 over a to the power of 5, b to the power of 2. Moving on here to this third example, which is going to be our last example for today, we have a squared b to the power of 3 over a minus 1 b to the power of 2. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to times out this bracket with the cube and then with the squared at the bottom. So now what's going to happen is we say that 1 in front of the a cubed is going to be 1 again. So we'll just move on to the variables. So a 2 times 3. I'm sorry, that's my, yes, 2 times 3. That is going to be 6. And then b 1 times 3, that's going to give me 3. And then here we have a minus 1. So that's going to be a minus 1 times 2. That's going to give me minus 2. And then b 1 times 2, that's going to give me 2 as well. Okay? So just to make it look a bit more simpler, we have a to the power of 6, b to the power of 3 over a to the minus 2, b to 2. Cool. So once again now, what we're going to do is we are going to divide. And what do we know in the base of the same when we're dividing? We are going to be minusing exponents, okay? So basically what's happening here is we have a 6 minus negative 2, right? So that's just the a, that's 6 minus the negative 2 down here. And we have b, 3 minus 2. Cool. So if we work that out, 6 minus negative 2, because we are minusing a negative, it becomes positive. So 6 plus 2 gives me 8. And this is b, 3 minus 2, that gives me 1. And that is our final answer there. Okay, so guys, thank you so much for joining today's lesson. I hope that it helped you to revise your exponents and hopefully see what you need to be looking out for in the year ahead. Thank you so much.